Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the meeting of the Northern Planning Committee. We are not expecting a fire drill today. In the event of an alarm sound, please leave the building and gather at the front of the building. I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Could you also ask you please to ensure that mobile phones are switched off? Finally, to ensure that members of the committee and all of points raised by the public speakers or raised in the debates are properly heard. I must advise you that will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This meeting is held in public, not a public meeting. And in such and if such behaviour takes place and persists, I will adjourn at the meeting. I shall now ask the members of the committee on officers to introduce themselves. I'll start. I'm Paul Wynn, Chairman of this committee. I represent Priest Ward. If I can start with you, Ted, please. Middle one. Middle one, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. My name's Ted Clark. I represent the combined ward of Mason Hill, Column and Sutton with a particular interest in the uh, Basin Hill. Thank you, Ted. Edward? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Edward Towers, representing the WEM division. That's WEM, WEM Rural and Wixel. Thank you. Jeff? Jeff Elmer, the member for Ellesmere Urban. Mike, Mike Isherwood, representing Oswald Street West. Gary Bertie, representing Bagley. Vince Hunt, Alan Alex Wackley, and Ray Joyce Parrott, uh, representing St. Hillswood Ward. Cheryl Haken, I'm here as a club for Mark Jones, uh, and I represent with yourself. Uh, uh, David Vasma, representing Underdale. Thank you, officers. Starting. Kelvin. Kelvin Hall, Principal Finance. Principal Finance, Miranda Garrard, Solicitor. Gemma Lawley, Developing Highways Manager. Thank you very much. Uh, right, can I just run that? Could everybody bring their microphones close to themselves, please? I want you hard of hearing here including me at the moment. Gerald, could you just bring yours closer to your mouth, please? OK. Right, OK. Agenda. So, receive apologies for absence. Yes, we have one. It's Mark Jones being substituted by Gerald Daking. Item two, to confirm the minutes of the meeting of the Northern Planning Committee held on the 3rd of August, 2021, attached to Mars. Minutes to follow. Um, can I have a post, please? <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. Second. Thank you, Vince. Right, public questions. Do we have no? Yeah, let's receive any public questions, petitions from the public, notice of which have been given in accordance with the procedure of 14. The deadline of this meeting is 2 p.m. on Thursday, 26th of August. Do, do, do we have any public questions? Thank you very much. Disclosure of any pecuniary interests, anybody? No, that's good. Right, item five, Belvedere School, Cromwell Road, Shrewsbury. And Philip's presenting this. Thank you, Philip. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, this application is made in full and proposes a new secondary school and associated works, which include the provision of solar panels on the roof and, on a, and also on external. Excuse me a minute. Right, I'll start again. Application is made in full and proposes new secondary school and associated works, which include the provision of solar panels on the roof and on external freestanding canopies on a site within the existing school's playing field. And once occupied, the demolition of the existing school and its area in use as part of the school recreational facilities at Cromwell Road, Shrewsbury. Members will be aware of the site having visited it this morning. 
Uh, there are no updates on this application, on the update sheet. So, uh, application site is outlined in red, and to the north, hatched purple, is the site of the existing school teaching uh, facility complex. Next slide, next slide, please. Uh, this is the master plan proposed site. It wants to develop school to be located to the southwestern corner, and note the other side of the boundary, the residential area. Uh, this has raised concerns from members of the public. Uh, officers are now satisfied with regards to distance and immunity and privacy issues. Members will also note during the site visit this morning that we walked to this boundary and we observed the, the, the strength of the boundary and the distance of the dwellings on the other side. Next slide. This is the existing site plan, a uh, new school to be built on the existing school playing field, as I've mentioned. Next one. This is the proposed <coughs> site plan uh, and its use in its entirety. Uh, the school to the southwestern side and on the existing playing field, and on the other side of Belvedere Road, the existing school complex, which will be turned into uh, play out facilities and car parking for staff. Uh, that was another point that was pointed out to you during your site visit this morning. Uh, you'll also be aware of the cedar tree, which is the school's emblem. That is in the centre of the site and that will be undisturbed as a result of the proposal. Next slide. That shows the school, as, which is L-shaped and in, in, in the corner uh, of the existing playing field. The school is proposed to cater for up to 900 pupils. I understand the current school rule is uh, 840. Next slide. Right, then these are the uh, 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 elevation plans. It's a three story building. Uh, the members will have noted this morning the part of the existing school complex is also three story. And the three sets of plans. If you run through, please call me. I got some more coming up later, and then, and then run through the floor plans, please. That's just to give you an idea what the school will look like. Floor plans, please. That's over three floors. Next one. Next one. Right, come to the next one, please. Right, that's uh, an, an image of what the school will look like. Uh, with this, uh, this is the main entrance, uh, facing on to a Belvedere Lane. And the final plan, please. Uh, landscaping, I think, is vital here. Uh, there's a courtyard uh, landscape entrance. The application before you is per, per the report, and during the application process, and there were a number of issues that officers considered needed further consideration, which included posi position of school in relation to the boundary, ecological issues, and plains school school playing area provision in accordance with consultation with the statutory consultee on this matter, Sport England. I am pleased to say that all these matters are now satisfactorily resolved and as set out in the report before you, it is noted the Town Council have indicated support for the application with adequate consideration to neighbouring residential amenity. The Council's regulatory services are co content with the proposal subject to condition being attached to any approval notice issued in respect of on-site working, uh, condition 18 as set out in accordance with section 6.7 of your report. Shrewsbury Civic Society comments outlined in paragraph 4.10 uh, with regards to reuse or noting. However, in this instance, in consideration of the existing school complex and its design, scale and location and environmental matters, overall, the replacement school considered satisfactory. You'll notice the emphasis on solar panels and green energy sinking. Public highway and transportation matters with conditions attached to any approval no notice considered acceptable. These are conditions 6, 7, 11 and 12 in Appendix 1 and uh, the highways officer has asked for uh, travel 
update, uh, uh, an updated travel plan. Uh, she didn't consider the one uh, submitted with the application satisfactory. Uh, she is here today uh, with regards to any issues you may have regarding highway matters. Landscaping issues in consideration of detail as submitted is considered acceptable. And it does, of course, include retention of the cedar tree, as I've mentioned, in the centre of the school playing field. Condition number four covers uh, landscaping matters. It might be mindful to support the application in accordance with the officer recommendation. Drainage issues with condition attached, the also considered acceptable as advised by the council's drainage team. In conclusion, the proposal for replacement school is considered acceptable. Concerns as raised by members of public have been taken into consideration and the application resulted in amended plans being received, which indicate the school approximately two metres further into the site than originally proposed, along with additional landscaping. It is also considered that there is an existing strong boundary on the boundary of the site where the school is proposed to be constructed, as I touched on earlier. The recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report and any modifications to these con conditions as considered necessary by the case officer in conjunction with the assistant director of the service. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Philip. Mr Chair, may I, just, may I just say that um, the piece of paper that I've been handed was from Joyce. It's just the password for her iPad, which I'm having to use because my computer wasn't working, so I didn't want anybody thinking it was anything other than that. Thank you very much, Vince, because if it goes off, I'll need it. Okay. <laughs> right. right, we have three speakers on this uh, application. First is against. Linda Price, would like to come forward. I've just noticed your table is over there in that corner. Uh, that statement to be read out. Uh, In fact, that chair. statement to be read out by you. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no need for you to go. I have it here. Um, Linda Price writes, uh, I write as a resident of Carmen Avenue overlooking the site on the southern boundary of the proposed development, so will continue to be impacted by noise and light pollution generated by the school. The author of the external lighting layout was unable to calculate the source intensity of lighting on surrounding housing as no housing is shown on the drawing. We exist without street lighting through the night, therefore I do not expect the diminishing wildlife observed on the field to be impacted by unnecessary lighting during the night. As for the suggestion of work on Sundays and bank holidays, I require reassurance that this will not happen. The conclusions based on a transport assessment undertaken on the 16th of February 2021 during half term and period of lockdown are, in my opinion, an inaccurate foundation upon which to base a proposal and should be revised based on evidence of a normal school day. The author will have been unaware of the transport and pedestrians generated by other numerous schools in Belvedere and Monkmore including Pressfeld, St Giles, Cromore, Belvedere Primary and Sevendale Academy. Other hazardous passenger vehicles not associated with the local area, such as the police, are less than conducive to sustainable modes of transport to which we should all be aspiring. Please, can the 20 mile per hour limit be extended to include adjacent residential roads? How will, construction management, sorry, how will the construction management plan be monitored? How will the parking, green spaces and side roads, such as Ragliff Gardens, be protected from becoming holding bays for HGV trucks waiting to enter the site and parking for tradespeople? How will the existing pedestrians and road users be protected from the site traffic in Belvedere Lane? The period of construction and demolition is projected to be for a minimum of 58 weeks. This should be matched by an accessible, an accessible communication system, including advocates, provided for all residents affected by this construction. A proactive approach from the developer, the responsible case officer and the school is necessary to minimise disruption and to ensure safety, such as ensuring HGVs adhere to the agreed route, avoiding the bridge and the schools at the times as agreed by the local councillor. Whilst I have no objection to a new purpose-built educational facility for the community, I do not expect the safety and quality of our environment to be compromised during the short term or the longer term. 
Thank you, Miranda. Right now we have the local member, Councillor Pam Mosley. You have five minutes, Pam. Would you like a warning in 30 seconds? Thank you, Chair. I think I'll be well with you. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Um, I would like to preface my comments by saying that I welcome the provision of a new modern teaching accommodation um, to meet the needs of local secondary school students. I am a school governor at Belvedere School, and so I'm very, very aware of the difficulties of managing and maintaining a site which consists of a mix of buildings from various periods and styles, some of which date back to when it was a boys' school. Some of these buildings now require significant resources to update and keep them in a teach today's curriculum. However, there are some issues I would like to raise regarding this proposal and its setting in the residential area of Mugmore. My first point relates to the siting of the new main school block on the existing school playing fields. It is a matter of concern to some local residents of the properties at the top end of Belvedere Lane, which overlook the site, that they were faced with a view from their homes of a three-storey block with additional plants on the roof. These properties, which are chiefly seven-side housing homes, have first four balconies, which exacerbates their concern. The differential in height and mass with the new building will impact on their outlook and light. And while the siting of the building was adjusted as the planning application progressed, siting of the building alongside the eastern boundary, alongside the railway line, would have had a minimal impact. My chief concerns relate to highways, travel, movement and access, both during construction and more importantly, in the arrangements of these matters in the proposed layouts. Firstly, I was pleased, having made the comment on the issues when the application was first submitted, that the importance of the crossing point between the two school areas across the top end of Belvedere Lane has been recognised by the Highways Department and recommendations made. Currently, this section of the lane, which is a public right of way, provides a pedestrian route through to Northwood Road and vehicular access to three private residences and is crossed only by students and staff using the sports hall and playing field on the other side. With the rebuilt school, this use will increase greatly. Many students will continue to enter the school site by the existing entrance on Cromia Road and cross the lane to reach the new building. Also, the staff car park will be on the old section of the site, requiring the lane to be crossed by staff en route to work. This section of the route needs to be addressed with improved surfacing, lighting, signs and visibility displays. And I'm pleased to see that condition seven relates to this and the rest of Belvedere Lane. This is a very important point, which I hope Highways will ensure is, is um, dealt with correctly. I am also pleased to see the requirement for the revision of the school travel plan to be implemented before the new building is brought into use and monitored thereafter, and similar requirements for the servicing and delivery plan. Residents living on Belvedere Deer Lane will experience changed and increased traffic patterns, and the effects of these need to be mitigated for those residents. As an aside, it would appear that progress is at last being made in regard to the road layout on the Belvedere Road Bridge, with consultation to take place locally. Measures to make the road bridge safer for many primary and secondary school children, including from this school, have been needed for a long time. Because of the development site's location, it is essential that an effective construction management plan is developed. Bringing in large building modules on even larger vehicles along Cromia Road, Belvedere Road and Belvedere Lane will not be easy, aside from the volume of other contractors and subcontractors' vehicles. Condition 6 appears to be a comprehensive schedule of the requirements for such a plan, and I hope that these will be strictly adhered to, and those managing it will be responsive to the concerns of residents. A large volume active housing site not far from the school has had many breaches in recent years, and I would not wish similar occurrences here. External lighting is mentioned within the report, with Condition 13 relating to limiting the impact of external lighting on the local bat population. This is welcome, but I would also like to ensure that the effect of external nighttime lighting is designed also to minimise disturbance to the residents of Belvedere Lane, who will live close to the site. The replacement of the school playing field area lost to development appears to be acceptable to Sport England, providing that a wide range of measures are taken when the new area is laid out for future use. I also welcome the requirement for a community use agreement to be prepared with Sport England and agreed with the LPA to ensure that playing pitches, courts and sports hall facilities may be enjoyed by the wider community. I note that Shropshire Council's Parks and Recreations Manager declined to comment on this planning application and I am both disappointed and bemused. If an agreement about the community use of the sports facility is not something they would want to comment on, I wonder what they would comment, make comment on. 
This leads on to the issue of demolition of the old school buildings and the development of the new sports facilities in their place. I would like to request that, again, a very detailed construction method statement is developed at this stage of the process. The site is surrounded by residential properties and demolition can be a very dirty, noisy business which will entail a lot of traffic movements onto residential streets, as will the laying out of the new sports fields. This must be carefully laid down and tightly monitored for compliance to prevent the, immune, the immunity of local residents. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Just we go, before we go to the next speaker, we haven't got a clock on in here. So you can do it, man. Give me a wave when three minutes is up, okay? Thank you. Right, we have somebody speaking for Nigel Cousins, who'd like to come forward, please. Thank you. You have three minutes. Would you no, um, would you like a first second warning? Yes. Yes? Yes. Just, just press, press the middle one. That's it. You're okay. Right. Yeah. Amanda, could you just make sure he gets a 30 second warning? 30 second warning. Okay, thank you. Uh, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Your officer's report has more than adequately addressed the key issues arising from this scheme, and the recommendation of approval reflects the proactive discussions with your officers at both pre application and during the consideration of the application itself. The scheme will provide a very high quality new school meeting excellent educational standards in a highly sustainable, low-carbon manner. The replacement playing fields on the site of the existing school will compensate fully for the playing field space taken by the new building on the southern plot. Sport England have confirmed their satisfaction with the proposals. The new school will accommodate an equivalent number of pupils and staff to the existing school, and the majority of the vehicle movements to the school will access the car park on the northern plot via the existing access. Although limited service and vehicle park and visitor parking provision is made on the southern plot, a suitable crossing of Belvedere Lane is provided. The transportation implications of the proposal are confirmed as acceptable. The location and orientation of the new building has been subject to comment during the pre-application consultation and subsequent submission of the application. Further consideration has been given to this and the building has been moved further to protect the immunity of the neighbouring residents. It's worth noting that the strong existing boundary planting exists and particularly along the western boundary, this will be maintained and further planting will bolster this boundary. The location of the informal play areas to the east of the building also means that residents to the west and the north will be protected from playground activity by the building itself. The officer's report thoroughly appraises the proposal. It's confirmed, confirmed as acceptable by technical consultees, including in regards to waste management, highways, drainage, ecology, landscape, regulatory services, and the rights of way officer. The proposal is suitable for the Grants and Planning Commission, subject to the suggested conditions, including addressing comments made by the other speakers in relation to construction management and lighting. Overall, I would commend the approach taken by your officers. They clearly set out the planning balance in their report. The report confirms that, that the proposal accords with relevant planning policy, the development plan, the NPPF and other material considerations. I respectfully request that you follow their recommendation and approve the scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. OK, before we open the floor, so Philip, would you like to make any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, in response to the uh, written uh, representation from the member of the public uh, and external lighting, yes, I, I, uh, I've noted what was said, and we do have a condition, number 13, with regards to external lighting, but that's more geared towards ecology. That can be uh, amended to include uh, consideration to residential immunity. And of course, low voltage um, uh, lighting, but obviously it would have to comply with uh, safety and security uh, legislation as well. But it, it, that is a point that can be added. Uh, in re reference to um, working on site, condition number 18 uh, attached in Appendix 1 uh, covers this matter. Uh, <coughs> Regards highways, I'd like to defer it if there's anything the highway officer would like to add on that. Um, one thing I noted was um, about a 20 mile speed limit, which I am aware is in existence in 
school areas, but I'm not certain what the legislation and how that is covered. So if the highway officer could touch on that, please. Uh, construction management plan. Uh, yes, well, that is subject to condition. Uh, condition number six uh, in, the, in the appendix uh, covers that matter. And then uh, other issues raised, I think, were covered in, in the speech from the local member. Uh, she, uh, who I noted um, has raised concerns about the um, siting and uh, the fact that uh, our own recreation officer didn't comment. Well, I think the reason she didn't comment was she deferred to Sport England. Uh, Sport England want to see uh, no loss in playing it field area so therefore to build on the existing site the, the school was restrained and th this was considered the most sensible compromise and uh, residential immunity uh, as I touched on in my presentation has been considered and was observed by members on site this morning and uh, yes I noted the local members comments about the um, updated travel plan thank you well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, um, I wholly recommend this plan, uh, but my, my concern is from a previous council with the access across the residential road of Belvedere Lane to, to the site during construction. And it, this will be a, a thinly metal road and it's going to have quite a, a large use of heavy goods and other vehicles. Will there be anything in the plans to ensure this road is brought back into? for work and use for the residents when the school is finished. Yeah, yeah I've noted the comments, but uh, I think those issues can be adequately covered by the conditions. Yeah. Sorry, apologies. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to confirm that there would probably be a, as part of the construction management plan will be a precondition survey that's undertaken and that's sort of landed. And then under the Highways Act, if there is any damage to the surface of the carriageway, then uh, we can recover the costs or ask the developer to, to undertake those works. That will be part of the construction management plan. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I too um, uh, would support this application, but I've just got one or two concerns. Is the cedar tree, which is raised is so important. Has it got a TPO on it? If not, could it have to protect it from any future interference? Um, because that's going to be right in, in the middle of the new the new um, development. Um, the lane we were talking about this morning that everybody needs to cross does need to be paid attention to for lighting and so on. <laughs> there are very few street lights along that that, that lane and uh, it's going to be pretty important, I think, if, if, if there's going to be an increase of children and um, and parents and bicycles and pedestrians. And the third one I have here is floodlighting of pitches. There's no mention of this. Is, is, is that a possible proposal with this? And if so, does it come under a different application? Because Sport England generally like to encourage a full use of their pitches and would normally come back and ask for flood, flood, floodlights to be fitted. And I just wondered if that was going to be important at all considered at all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, first of all, I believe the tree, uh, the cedar tree is, is subject to a TPO. Uh, if it wasn't, it certainly could be, and there'd be no problem in getting TPO on that, as what we all saw this morning. Lighting condition, I touched on. However, you've raised an interesting point about flood lighting because the existing uh, school field, I noted, as, I'm, as I observed, has not got flood lighting, but any flood lighting would need plan permission in any case because of the, the height of the uh, the lights. And uh, again, I think this matter can be tied in with uh, the uh, slight amendment to the wording of, con of the condition number 13 with regards to external lighting on site. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I have to say this was a, quite a read, this report. Um, and it was, I thought, a very good report, actually. Um, it's taken on board all of Sport England's bits and bobs. And I think uh, Councillor Moses spoke very well, although I did note that most of her concerns are actually picked up in the report. Um, I think more than anything, possibly there was a, the seeking of um, some assurances that, that the conditions will be adhered to. 
Um, so I would like officers' assurance that, that they will as best as possible. Um, I guess if you want to, um, there are no floodlights, as has been said there at the moment, but if you want to improve community use, then come the winter in the evenings, it may well be that some are added. Uh, but as but has been pointed out, it was going to be one of my questions, but that's subject to a set, separate planning um, application. I think we'd have our time to, to talk about it. I mean, I have to say for, for, for the young people of the area, to get a brand new school is um, carbon, carbon effective, for want of a better word, is, is a really good thing. Um, I think they're really lucky. I'd love one in Austin Street. But hey, there you go. Um, I'm, I'm going to... Um, move the officers' recommendations because um, I suspect we're all going to sit here um, otherwise just pushing the same already spoken about by Councillor Mosley concerns which are addressed in that <laughs> just re-seek uh, re assurance from, from officers that, that those conditions will be kept an eye on and adhered to. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to if officers are happy with it. My computer's back. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I, 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 I'm concerned about highways issues on this application. I think there's a lot of um, things I'm concerned about here. Um, if you look at the, the, the residential uh, residents' comments, she made the comment that the transport assessment was done during lockdown, during half term. And I wonder if the highways officer perhaps could make a response to that. Um, I'll be interested. Secondly, um, as far as the um, in paragraph 6.6.4, it's noted that um, uh, improvements could be made to um, to along Belvedere Lane. But will will those improvements um, can be you know LT and 120 compliant? And will we have proper uh, separation of traffic and cyclists and pedestrians? And I just I'm concerned here that um, not enough thought has been given to um, proper proper access and safe access for students and staff um, as they cross cross Belvedere Lane. Um, I, I back Councillor Hunt's um, uh, view that there must be proper enforcement of the conditions. There are lots of conditions um, in this planning application, um, and um, I do I, I have concern about enforcement in other areas, and I want to make sure that, um, as far as you know, the, this is concerned, they are enforced properly, and we get some reassurance from officers that this that they will be looked at, particularly in terms of the access during the construction um, and uh, the provision of proper um, proper facilities as outlined in the in, in the conditions. Um, but um, lastly, I'd just, just like to say that um, I think it's, it's good that there is going to be a proper a, a, a new school for the, at this site. And many of my, my residents, my children, my residents of my patch use um, Belvedere, of course. So I, wel I welcome the application as a whole. I think it's, uh, it's, it's on the whole, it's a good one, although I do have concerns about the appearance of the building. I wish that it could be slightly more. Um, uh, Good to the eye, but um, I would like uh, reassurances about some of the uh, some of the points I've raised. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to please? Thank you, Chair. So, just to clarify over the timing of any surveys and the transport assessment. Um, the survey data that was submitted in support of the transport assessment to do with the existing travel behaviour was done in June 2019. So that was pre-COVID and during school times, and we would accept that June is a, a fairly neutral month and representative of existing travel behaviour. Um, in terms of the, um, the existing patterns, Belvedere School actually has got a really good uh, kind of uh, number of pedestrians that are, or pupils that are arriving by uh, foot at the moment, and that is something obviously from a highways perspective we would be keen to maintain and we don't want to change any body travel behaviour by the fact that they feel uh, unsafe in travelling to school and then reverting to, to the past. So um, in terms of Belvedere Lane, the proposals are subject to a planning condition and will be fully considered and compliant with um, all design standards. Um, and 
the uh, other question, I think, was with regard to the construction management plan in terms of actually managing that, and we can in, undertake stakeholder engagement in terms of the, the local member as well in managing that process. And that's what we've done on other sites, which are in close proximity to the school in terms of setting up a, a working group that's involved the residents. So they're able to give uh, feedback. So we, we could do that on this occasion because we have done that elsewhere. If there's any other questions I haven't addressed, then please let me know. Thank you. Joyce. Thank you. I think um, aesthetically, this building looks like something that was built in the 1960s. It would have been very cutting edge then. Um, and it's a shame that um, something a bit more interesting has been built. However, I would like to second Councillor Hunter's proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. I must go with your thoughts on that as well. It's not the most beautiful building, but there you go, it's a school. Right, we're proposing to set, go on, David. Yeah, can I just confirm the, the highways officer said that they were compliant with all policies that will include LTM 120, I assume. It will yeah. do, yes. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank we're you. very mindful of that. Yeah, thank you. Right, do we have any more comments? Yes, thank you, Alex. Sorry, just one final one, um, going back to highways. I know that uh, on page 28, 6.6.4, says that um, it's recommended that details are submitted for approval and implemented prior to the opening of the new build school, but this is on pedestrian and cycle access. Um, that isn't as it specifically states in the next bit of this, so can I just quickly see clarification on whether that recommendation is going to be taken into account that, you know, not everyone trying to comply with improvements might be made before the school opens, because it's a massive time frame, obviously, in the same video. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, Chair. Um, so, planning condition seven uh, states that the work shall be fully implemented in accordance with the approved details prior to the building first being brought into use. Right, Jack. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with regards to 21 mile speed limit, the current 21 mile speed limit on Cromer Road runs from Cromer School down past the existence of Beverly School. And then we reverse to 30 miles an hour past that. But it, there's no current uh, 20 mile less feeling on Belvedere Lane, which will become the main entrance of the school. Is that something we could look into? I'm sure they could. could yeah, yeah. Yes, that is something that we've considered as well as um, localised pedestrian improvements along Belvedere Lane. So, and if yeah, that happens, would you then re remove the 30 mile, leave the 20 mile less feeling so, to the entrance of the car Yeah, so the extension of the existing okay. uh, 20 mile an hour to incorporate Belvedere Lane. And the okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's no more questions. You're opposed and seconded. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. That's it. To item six, proposed to Melbourne Land South of Battlefield Roundabouts. Uh, Kelvin presenting this. Thank you, Chair. Um, th this is an application for the erection of a new food store, uh, associated car parking, access, landscaping, and a substation on land south of Hatfield Roundabout in North Shrewsbury. Before I start, I would like to draw your attention to the additional letters scheduled related to this item. Um, firstly, in relation to the representations made, there have been 28 objections and 71 letters of support received. Um, secondly, uh, in relation to paragraph 6.1.2 of the report, um, just to clarify that the site was allocated for employment use prior to the recent changes that have been made to the use classes order, um, not, not afterwards. Uh, and finally, there are a number of alterations and additions to the list of planning conditions that officers recommend are added to the decision 
if members' results grant the planning commission and they're set out in the schedule previously circulated. Uh, also, members should note that the reference to the MPPF in para 6.1.1 should state that its date is 2021 and not 2019. Um, additionally, uh, in relation to paragraph 1.6 of the report, uh, which refers to the, um, the, 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 the proposal that the applicants um, enter into a section 106 agreement, um, to market their current site for employment purposes only for a period of five years. Um, the applicants have now confirmed that they are willing to um, amend this to extend this compliance period to 10 years, not five years, so that it would be marketed um, for um, employment purposes for 10 years rather than for five years. Um, we've also received a further support letter um, today um, from a resident um, who has said that um, very supportive of the proposal, it would be a godsend for the northern part of the Shrewsbury town. Um, uh, the site is in a good position, um, it's not tucked away in a mini industrial estate area like the existing one, and it would also likely reduce the amount of traffic on Halscott Lane. Um, and um, he is um, happy that the proposal would retain all existing jobs and create additional roles um, as well. Um, in addition, um, we've also received an objection from Tesco um, last Friday, who has raised a number of uh, matters. Um, I'll just summarise these um, now and then um, I'll refer to them later on in, in, in the presentation. Um, so they, um, their, their objections are related to the lack of any advice to the committee on important policy considerations relating to re retail impact and sequential assessment, the loss of an allocated employment site that is intended to provide an important focus for investment in the town and a significant number of jobs. Um, the, the, they've got concerns that the officer's report misapplies matters concerning the recent introduction of use class E. Um, concern that there is an absence of reasonable and necessary conditions to control the nature and scale of the proposal. Um, they have referred to the applicant suggested 106 obligation and considered that it fails to compensate for the loss of a strategic employment site and there is no certainty that it will deliver a beneficial outcome. And finally, um, they have raised the relative inaccessibility of the site by public transport and its unsuitability for food retail. Um, there's obviously been a number of changes um, um, and, and, and amendments being put forward by officers to the conditions and in view of it, it this it's recommended at the moment the recommendation is that members um, grant planning permission subject to a 106 agreement and conditions set out in appendix one officers consider that um, if members are minded to grant permission then this is subject to the section 106 agreement the conditions listed in Appendix 1 as amended by the additional representations and that members also give delegated approval to officers to um, undertake amendments to or additions to the proposed conditions. So moving on to the presentation. Uh, the site is edged and hatched uh, red. Um, it's on the south side of Battlefield uh, roundabout. Members visited the site. Uh, this morning and approached the site from the footpath at the apex of the triangle to the southeast. Next. Um, this is the existing site. Um, you can see the, the, the square towards the south. That was the, the pylon uh, that members saw uh, with the path running through uh, the site. And then the, you can see the, the, the existing veteran oak tree uh, central to the site. The, uh, the, the path that you'll see isn't a public right of way. The public right of way runs um, further to the north of the site and it's intended that the, the path would be, the, the, the existing right of way will be diverted under a formal uh, path diversion process. Uh, these are the photos um, of the site. First, the top one is looking from the battlefield roundabout to the, uh, to the north, looking south. And the one below is roughly where the members um, uh, were inside from this morning, looking to the north and south. Uh, this is the um, proposed site plan. Um, you'll see the 
uh, the, 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 the supermarket would be um, just to the northeast of the existing veteran tree, which we will be protected to show. The parking to the north of the store and the servicing and um, um, service vehicles um, compound will be to the south. And you can see the, the proposed location of the new access coming in from the um, south of the Bathfield roundabouts. Um, would be an in and, and out um, access with a left turn lane coming in from the north and a right turn lane for traffic approaching to the um, from the south. Um, and you can see that there's a substantial amount of um, landscaping and, and buffer um, areas as well um, in and around the, 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 the site. Next one. Uh, these are the proposed elevations and the floor plan. Some more detailed ones showing the proposed site access, um, showing the, um, the, the, <coughs> the, the, the way that vehicles will get in, into and out of the site. Um, customers would um, come in from the Battlefield Road entrance and then veer left into the car park, whereas service vehicles would, would veer off to the, to the right to their um, service compound area. Uh, this is the proposed boundary treatment. Um, it's proposed that there will be a um, in, in the, the, the pink lines show a 1.2 metre high post and rail uh, fence um, in and around the site and differentiate different areas. The proposed blue line that you can just see um, just to the south of the service compound would be a 2.4 metre high close bordered timber fence to um, cut down on, 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 on noise levels. Then this is the proposed landscaping plan. Um, Say so there'll be um, elements of um, um, new planting, uh, 19 new trees proposed to be planted. The existing veteran tree will be retained and protected. Um, uh, wildfire planting areas as well. Um, uh, and and uh, say so the buffer zone um, to, the, to the south of the existing footpath area between the, um, the footpath and the, the nearest houses. And these are the applicants' illustrations of how the site could look like once built. So, um, in terms of then the, the 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 report and the main matters raised, you'll see from the report that um, we have objections from the town council um, and also the parish council, um, and um, the, the the local member um, has formally objected um, as, as well. Um, in going back to the concerns raised by, by Tesco and the, um, the, the, the concern over the retail impact and sequential assessment, um, just to confirm that the applicant has carried out a retail impact and a sequential assessment as required by policy. Um, it will allow the Aldi site to construct a, um, a larger format modern store to replace the old one. Um, the, the, the uplift in floor space between the existing one and the and the proposed one is um, uh, only 473 square meters, which is below the threshold uh, required for, um, the, for for a full retail assessment. However, a retail assessment has been undertaken, um, and, um, and and this has been a, 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 the, the format of this has been agreed by by officers. Um, in terms of the policy requirements, um, this relates to standard plan policy MD10B, which requires that an assessment is carried out. Um, so the proposal does comply with that policy. Um, also references as well in the core strategy um, CS15 to maintain and enhance the vitality and viability of town centres. And the submitted retail assessment um, demonstrates that the application would, would, would do this. Further policy is provided by policy MD4 of the SAMDA plan, which sets out the requirements that the um, there's a need to be. It sets out the requirements that need to be satisfied for um, proposed alternative uses on allocated employment sites, and officers are satisfied that these have also been met. And um, these are that there are no other suitable development sites for the proposal, and um, that the development will provide significant employment opportunities or other significant benefits for the sustainability of the community and that the development will not adversely affect the range and choice of employment sites in terms of location, quality, type and size. 
and to confirm my officers do consider that the proposed proposal does comply with the relevant policies on, on relation to retail users. Um, there's also been a concern raised about the loss of the allocated employment site that is intended to provide an important focus for investment in the town and the number of jobs. Um, the, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the site has been marketed um, um, in, in the past, um, however there's been minimal interest seen from the market. Um, there was a previous planning application submitted for a hotel, pub, coffee shop and trade counters um, at this particular site but that was withdrawn earlier this year. Um, there was, there's been concern raised that the officer's report misapplies matters concerning the recent introduction of use pass E. Uh, the report does set out in 6.1.1 what the relevant policy documents are and the development plan and also in 6.1.2 it sets out that the land allocation does precede the recent changes to the use classes order in that the land is allocated for employment uses um, however since that allocation has been made um, there have been changes to the use classes order such that class B1 which was offices and light industry is now class E um, and um, the report does reflect that those 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 changes and the fact that um, um, that there's now an expectation that there is more interchangeability now between what um, land is allocated for and um, the um, and, and, and the uses because the use classes order has now been widened to take into account not just um, um, the, the, the the existing light industry and offices but also um, retail which falls part of the same use class now class D. Um, there was a concern raised about the absence of reasonable and necessary conditions to control the nature and scale of the proposal. Um, <laughs> reflecting on this, um, officers do consider that it would be appropriate to impose additional conditions relating to the use of the site to set out that it should only be used for retail um, uses within that widened use class E and not for other uses which might be permissible within that use class and also to impose a condition setting out the maximum floor space for um, the um, various elements of the, of the store and um, officers can um, put forward additional conditions um, that the commission should be subject to. Um, in terms of the um, proposed 106, section 106 obligation, um, the, 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 the draft legal agreement which is being drawn up um, would prevent both sites from being used for a food store um, such that you wouldn't have two food stores operating at the same time and it's the intention of Aldi that um, in fact the new, new store would open the day after the existing one closed down and that would be formalised in the 106 agreement to ensure that there, um, that, that there wouldn't be two stores operating together. So in that respect the proposal that is before you today is for a, that to be a land swap um, Aldi would move from one site to another one and then as part of the legal agreement they would um, um, only market the site for non-retail uses for a period of 10 years um, um, to allow um, future um, or other uses to come forward. Um, you'll see in the report that um, our economic development team um, are um, supportive of the proposal in that it creates additional jobs and increases the retail offer. Uh, but referred to a um, report undertaken by Litchfield Economic Development um, which <coughs> part of the council which has indicated that there is an over provision of employment land for which the current site is allocated um, and they've also referred to the fact that while sites may be allocated of course there's no guarantee that they will be developed and whereas for this particular site there's a willing developer to develop the proposed site immediately for retail purposes and in addition the existing ALD site is capable of being converted and is also serviced and so should be um, attractive to um, other users, um, other non-retail users. Uh, the proposal would have some impact on the local highway network at times, um, however highways officers have assessed this as not being such an impact that the refusal could be warranted on highway grounds. The proposal provides 
satisfactory protection of the veteran protected oak tree and as you see in those substantial buffer and landscaping areas to enhance the ecological value of the site. Impacts on historic environment have been um, assessed and officers of the view that the proposal would result in less than sub substantial harm and therefore in terms of the, the balancing act um, when weighed against the, the benefits um, officers consider that that, that that would be acceptable and conditions can be imposed to ensure that impacts on residential amenity um, can be minimised in terms of delivery times and, and, and the buffer areas as well. So um, overall officers are content that the uh, proposal um, complies overall with the development plan and that planning permission can be granted subject to um, those additional conditions and to other conditions to be um, drawn up by officers and also to the completion of the section 106 agreement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, John. Um, right, we have three speakers on this. First is going to be read out. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The first speaker is Mr. Anthony Minor, and he is in support and he writes, Dear Planning Committee members, my name is Tony Minor and I live at 11 Hulscott Crescent, a short distance from both Aldi's existing store and proposed relocation site. I have written this letter to support proposals for the new Aldi store in Battlefield. This store will be a godsend for the northern part of Shrewsbury Town. The existing store has been very popular and Battlefield would greatly benefit from Aldi's continued presence in the area and the investment of a new and improved store that is modern and has increased parking provision. The new store design will also ensure an attractive approach to Battlefield. The proposed relocation site is in a good position for people in the local area, being on the main road and not tucked away in a mini industrial area where the existing Aldi store is located. Also, the new store would likely reduce the amount of traffic using Hulskirt Lane. On occasions, we cannot get out of Hulskirt Crescent because of the sheer volume of traffic. The fact that we will not have to drive through the Hulskirt traffic lights to reach the store is another bonus. It is also the general consensus that the level crossing on Hulskirt Lane is due to be closed in a year or two, so many people on this side of the town would have to use the new link road anyway. In addition, it appears that the town centre may be pedestrianised sometime in the near future. If so, a store off Battlefield Roundabout will be the backbone of the outlying and local communities. Aldi is a real asset to Battlefield. The store provides jobs in the area and has always served our community well. I understand that the new store would retain all the existing jobs and create additional roles. And after the last year, any employment should be welcomed. <laughs> I would like to see this new store be built so Aldi can continue to operate in the community. And thank you for taking the time to listen to my letter. Thank you, Miranda. Well, local the local member, Dean Cowell, you have five minutes, Dean. Would you like a warning? So You're a very speaker. kind chairman. That would be great. You're a very kind chairman. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, I was going to start by speaking about um, the local view. And that kind of has introduced what I was going to say in the, the letters of support. Very few of them are actually from the local local area in terms of properties and people that will be directly affected either by the existing Audi store or by this proposal. The idea that a uh, local resident from uh, who is, is it won't be in any way, shape or form affected by this development for whom probably several hundred if not a thousand or more houses are closer than, than, than that would pass as the support of the local community is a little bit amusing to me and I wouldn't want members of the committee to think that the balance of support to objections on the planning portal is actually reflective or local opinion, because I can assure you categorically that it most certainly is not. I'm aware that the Audi have done a fantastic job in terms of a mail out campaign, encouraging people to write and support. I'm also, I've also been told that they've had a stall at the <laughs> store encouraging people to write and support. And wanting to see what these people were supporting, I decided to look at a few of these comments, these supportive comments on the planning portal. 
say that I was disappointed is, is putting it mildly. The people were so keen to support this application that they couldn't even name a single tangible benefit. In fact, the supporting comment after supporting comment was left with a section that said open bracket insert supportive comment here close bracket i um i would not want people to think that that is reflective of the local community because i have had countless people contact me objecting to this and not one single person from the battlefield division contact me in support of it so moving on to the highways um, issue, and I was frankly a bit surprised, to be honest, about the about one particular comment. I think it was the final paragraph on page five that said that at peak times traffic can build up as far as the Shillingston Drive Junction from Battlefield Road. Well, I drive this route quite regularly when I'm working north of Shrewsbury, and I can regularly be queued up far beyond Shillingston Drive to get to Battlefield Island. In fact, often back as far as Arlington Way turnoff, which is the Tesco's um, junction for, for, for um, people who are less familiar with the area. And in fact, in coming the other direction, coming back into Shrewsbury, often traffic at peak times from Halscott Crossroads, which is the one beyond Tesco's, all the way back to Battlefield Island. So, Whilst I'm glad the, the highways officers recognise that there are significant congestion issues, I was a little bit surprised that that seemed to underestimate the scale of those traffic issues. And I've seen those, including during during lockdowns, um, when traffic has been has been lighter in general. And so I would. I would contend that actually it comes down slightly on the other side of the fence in terms of the highways considerations between um, severe and not severe. I, I recognise that highways officers do recognise that this will be have a negative effect. I would contend that it falls on the severe side of the fence and not on the non-severe side of the fence. And so I received this email from Tesco's at the end of last week, including their copying me into their um, letter of complaint. And I sat on the plan, this planning committee for I'm trying to think it's about six years. And in that time, we heard um, numerous applications for supermarkets. And, and, and I can never recall a competitor objecting to an application site. Finally, in terms of this as employment land, local people are not opposed to this, to a development on this site. I'm not opposed to a development on this site. The town council are not opposed to a development on this site. But what we want is what was promised. This is a key gateway strategic employment site. It gives an impression when people first arrive in Shrewsbury. We were promised high quality employment land, and that is what we want. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, we have one more speaker, uh, George Brown from Albion. Let's come forward, please. Would you like a 30 second warning? Uh, okay. Chair, uh, members, officers, uh, I'm George Brown, Property Director for Aldi Stores. We're delighted with the officer's recommendation to approve our application. Aldi's been part of the community in Shrewsbury since uh, Arlington Way opened in 1992. Over time, our range has shifted due to customer demands with a focus on fresh and chilled goods. Increased customer numbers has resulted in the need for more tills and wider aisles. While we were able to extend the store in 2006, it's still 40% smaller than our current design and can no longer accommodate the full range of products or the customer demand. The store's at the end of its viable life and will need to close. The land area can't accommodate a new build, so we've no other option than to relocate. And after an extensive search, we were able to acquire the allocated development site on Battlefield Road. While it's been allocated for employment, this has not come forward as the previous owners were unable to secure uh, viable end users. 
The application will protect all 25 existing Aldi jobs and will add at least 15 more. Furthermore, we've committed to a Section 106 agreement to deliver employment use at our Arlington Waste Store. This will be legally binding via a 10-year covenant uh, placed on the site during the sale. The application will therefore result in a land swap for employment units uh, uses, creating a large number of new jobs. Unlike the previous proposals for the battlefield site, we've looked uh, to uh, protect key features of the plot, including the veteran tree and public footpath. Unlike industrial units, the Aldi store will be timber clad to soften the appearance of the building and significant landscaping will be retained. While we're aware of the councillors' concerns over highway impact, the proposal will result in less traffic at peak times than the employment allocation. Quite simply, workers to and from the employment site will be on the network at peak hours. However, shoppers won't make a special trip at 5pm to a supermarket. The Aldi will therefore benefit the highway network when compared to an employment scheme, and this, uh, this is acknowledged by a highways officer. As Aldi is only relocating a short distance from Arlington Way, the Aldi customers are generally already on the network. This is acknowledged by your highways officer and will not resu result in adverse harm to the network, as is the policy test. I've heard Council Carroll's objection to this application. Firstly, given the site constraints, only two and a half of the five acres are actually developable. We would not invest £8 million into a new store, which is compromised by queuing traffic, that puts our customers off visiting again. In summary, the proposal will deliver sustainable development and will not undermine local employment land supply due to the land swap. Our sustainability credentials are strong. We use heat recovery system from our refrigeration equipment, which provides 100% of the store's heating. We'll provide four electric parking spaces from day one with capacity for <coughs> further 16. And our new stores generate around 1 million in wages, which, which provides wider benefits to the local economy. Overall, the proposal complies with the objectives of the development plan and MPPF. The proposal has been reviewed by an independent barrister who concludes that we would be successful at appeal and it is supported by officers. I ask you to support the planning application, which creates significant new employment in the town. Thank you. Thank you very much. You did go two seconds over. Well timed. Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, Calvin, would you like to make any comments before we open it up? No? Mark, would you like to make any comments before we open Okay, I'll open up the floor for... Yeah. Okay, hey, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to um, ask the Highway Officer about uh, pa um, the conclusion of paragraph 7.4. Um, it, it, it says there that um, the Highway Authority are satisfied that given this is an allocated employment site, the network can cope satisfactorily with the development. I'd like to know um, on what basis that judgment was made, um, given that there, as Councillor Carroll commented in his contribution, that there is significant queuing of traffic that I've experienced with myself many times. Um, and what, on what basis you came, came to that conclusion? Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, again, you know, going back in time, this site was allocated in the local plan um, as an employment site, and therefore the principle of development of this site had been established quite a long time ago. Now, this site was never going to be easy um, in relation to, you know, its local context to Battlefield Roundabout. Uh, the proximity to the uh, entry and exit and I think like probably um, uh, various agents that I've had dealings with over the last few years have been sort of grappling about access into the site and what would work or what would work best and uh, we, we you know we've looked at all sorts of scenarios but what has come forward is probably um, the, the the design that we probably anticipated um, would work would work best. It is not ideal. I, I recognise because I've, I've sat in queues as Councillor Carroll has done. I've been doing shoes all my life. Um, and whilst I, I said it in the report and talked about queues back to Shillingston Drive, that was on my sort of sort of recent experience. But um, you know, I, I know the north of this town town well, and you know, in, in my report, I, and I hope I sort of explained that. You know, this is not a, you know, a, a cut and dried, if you like, insofar as you know, everything works well. We know at times that there is congestion, but we also know with, with Aldi's, the way Aldi operates is that unlike um, some of the major operators who, who do operate peaks, uh, particularly on Friday evenings, Saturdays, 
Um, and the way Aldi works is, generally speaking, that the, the load, the departures and um, arrivals at the store are generally over the, over the whole day. It, it is not as peaky as a, a lot of um, a lot of other, other major stores. And, and that's why we, we tend to find that, um, you know, going back with this store, which has been in existence for, for many years, and the new stores that have come about in the rest of Shropshire, that in general, they, they don't cause a problem because, because of the way they operate in a, in, a, in a sort of a steady flow of traffic in and out of the site. But just going back and, and picking up some of um, Councillor Carol's comments, you know, this is not, you know, this is a congested route and access into the site is not, is not easy, particularly, I think it's more the right turn out of the site, which I think is more problematic at the end of the day, rather than, I don't see getting into the site as being a real difficulty, but certainly at some peak times, that right turn out of the site will be difficult for customers. And therefore customers will make that judgment at the end of the day when they shop and where they, where they gravitate to and from to some extent. So I think that's, that's where I come from at the moment. Okay. Just one question from me, Mark, to you. Did you have to look at, on the sites this morning, the roundabouts right there, after we can see that. Was the Epic taking into consideration about coming off the roundabout? I think that was, that was certainly looked at in the round. Um, I think that would require very significant works to be done, which would be very costly. Now, you know, as officers, we, um, you know, we have looked at the potential to improve this roundabout, which may, is probably likely to take place as part of a wider, you know, development proposals in the area, but not as part of this application site. Shame. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you, Vince and Joyce. Thank you. Excuse my little chapel there. You mentioned roundabouts and Mark came back within the round. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, who picked up on that. Um, I did pick up on the fact also that um, Mark said that they've been grappling with this for a number of years, um, which obviously means that it's been less than ideal, the whole concept of whether it's retail or employment, which, as we've heard from officers under the E-grade, and pretty well much one of the same now. I did note from the report as well, um, that planning inspectors are all a bit of a, in a bit of a fuddle over the whole, whole subject E thing, but are tending to come down on the side of, well, retails, employment, employment's kind of, it's the food industry, you know, so I can, I can see where they might come down on the side of, of going with caution and, and, and allowing appeals. Um, against people who have refused applications for this. I am disappointed that um, you know this got this got the application or the outline application approval in in the beginning for for industry as opposed to or for employment land as opposed to retail. Um, but I think now that's happened, we in a way we've kind of got our hands tied a little bit. I mean, I'll be interested to see what other people. I mean, we've heard it's less than ideal. It is less than ideal. It's obviously less than ideal. Um, that said, it will create jobs, and, and um, you know, it's the use of a bit of land that's been stood idle for some time, but actually frees up some space for more employment land on the old site. Um, I'm hoping some other members may shed a bit more light on their thoughts. Um, I'm erring on the side of agreeing with officers because I do think to a degree we've got our hands tied on this one that it needs, we need to approve it because um, I think it would bounce back at us if we didn't. Your choice then going after that. Thank you Chair. Um, it would have been interesting to know the view of our economic development officer as regards what has been proposed on this site and what we were, well, what Councillor Dean was referring to, what should be useful. Um, I'd like to ask a question um, in the report by our highways officer. It says, uh, the test, however, in planning terms is whether the cumulative traffic impact of the development would be severe, and the view of the highway authority is that the severe impact threshold would not be triggered to justify a highway objection 
on capacity or safety grounds. I'd like to know what, what would trigger severe impact threshold, um, if that's possible. Um, to me, um, as a layperson, coming out of that site and turning right would be a very dangerous thing to do, given the flow of traffic on both sides of the road. Um, is that dangerous? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, at my request, the, the, the application and access design was the subject of a, a stage one road safety audit, which is what we would normally ask for. And there are any changes to the highway network as part of the development proposal. That didn't. That, that was one of my concerns. In fairness, it's, it's as I think I said in, in uh, a bit earlier on. It's more the right turn out of the site, which is likely to be more problematic at peak times. But the safety audit has been done. It has not revealed any fundamental safety issues. That's been done by an independent um, consultancy on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Um, Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm slightly neutral on, on, on the plan. Um, one, I, I agree with Dean entirely about traffic coming off the site and no matter what time of day or night they come off, it's going to cause the, the already horrendous traffic situation of that field road to become unlivable for people. And if you look at the, the plan on the screen there now, why can't they have an egress road onto the A49, which leads directly onto the roundabout, and make the access on Battlefield Road access only and the egress then off the back end of the car park? On day 49. That would take all the right turn considerations out of the equation. Yes, the battlefield roundabout would be busier, but it's easier to pull out onto, onto a, on a slip road onto the roundabout than it is to trying to turn right across Battlefield Road. Uh, secondly, the question about the employment land, the loss of employment land, I think Ollie uh, answered that by saying Arlington Way is being offered on a 10 year um, section 106. Arlington Way is predominantly industrial, by industrial business park area, and it would be ideal to, to convert that in, away from, from retail into light industry. So I think they've answered that. But the biggest concern is the traffic congestion at the junction, and that could be addressed by having an, an egress route on the A49. Thank you, Paul, and Highways, for that. Um, any this is what we've got in front of us, so that would change our application. Um, Alex. Um, yeah, I just want to go through a, a couple of points. Um, I, I think something that should be included more in the discussion, which I think was mentioned in Council Campbell's objection, is the fact that this is actually quite a key strategic location. Like if you're coming into Shrewsbury from the north by the park, this is pretty much the first part of the town you're going to see. Um, I think it's put in the objections of a bit of a carbon carbon season mark. Uh, I do think it would be a little bit of a to lose quite important strategic location to that. Um, but the bigger point I want to raise is that in one of the uh, letters in, this was described as sort of modern and increased parking provision site. And I don't really think that, you know, actively encouraging car use sort of on the outskirts of town is a particularly modern way of doing things. I think that having 12 bicycle spaces and 148 car parking spaces is quite a Whole model two, only 12 bicycle spaces, most likely two or three of the bars I'm receiving. Um, I don't think it's a particularly modern way of looking at how the town should be developed, and I think that it's a shame given this is one of the bits of towns where there are actually you know, reasonable urban cycle lanes. Um, another point is that the Multi Commission said that the land area of Arlington Way, which is probably a relatively complex brownfield site, um, wouldn't allocate a new build. Um, I, I don't know what the process is something about this, but I don't think that's a particular planning reason because I mean presumably it's going to have to be allocated to rebuild something. Um, I, I don't see why the existing ground field site couldn't be used for something. Um, very as a business case, but you know, uh, I don't think that, that should really come into it too much. But um, yeah, I, I think just on an act of travel, that was really the main point I wanted to raise your office, is that it is a bit of a Waste of opportunities to do something a bit different and then a quite key strategic side that, that does seem a shame. So I'm very well solid opposing it in this one game. Thank you, Alex. Edward. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a couple of observations. Can we go back to the, 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 the roundabout one, Matt? 
thank you. Um, on the site this morning, uh, I took encouragement from the fact that the growth around the site edge was uh, was fairly substantial. It'll leave pruning, of course, all, all green stuff does, but it shielded quite a lot. Is it the intention that actually it's, it's paired back on the northern edge so the store can be seen from the roundabout? Because that's not shielding at all. That's uh, green vegetation to, helps mitigate sound and all sorts of traffic. It was very obviously noisy when we got out the cars to go to it. Uh, if it's going to be taken back, uh, I, I'm still concerned about that. It's a point number one. <laughs> um, I am concerned, Mark, about the roundabout when I saw it this morning. Um, I hear what you're saying uh, over here as well about a, a, an egress somewhere else, but it, if it's, there must be some funding somewhere in hiring budget somewhere. I mean, if Northwest Relief Road is involved in all that, ultimately, there must be some thought that in, in Shropshire that a, a fifth exit could be, because that would immediately take the right turn out. When I, you and I were in separate cars following each other off the side this morning, uh, Chair, I mean, it, it's very hard for them. McDonald's turn, the one we were on, to turn right. It, there are times in the day it's almost impossible. Uh, it's a very busy road. And uh, so it does concern me that we're talking now uh, and in the future it'll be busier for me. So we've got to make provision for that in this development. The third point was, and maybe you just touched upon this one as well actually, but uh, I'm increasingly concerned that we need to address cycling issues across the county, cycle networks. And uh, I just, I'm not sure where they are, and I've missed it in the report here, but it is important, I think, to make provision for active transport, I think you referred to as, uh, across the site, because it will lead to link up to other things that may be wanted in the future, and has that been put into the planning? So it's just three points there. Thank you. Vince? Thanks, Chair. I, I, I don't um, disagree, obviously, um, as, as you have, have alluded to, um, we can only deal with the planning application that is in front of us, and that's the one there. And um, I'm sure if we were running a competition, we would come up with a different scheme that might be better in and out. However, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to make a judgment based on what's in front of us. I also understand the point about active travel and, and, and bicycles, but it's not necessarily one that I agree with in store that's clearly designed to do the family shop. Um, it's one thing to get on your bike and pop down the corner shop or the local express mm -hmm. supermarket to get a pint of milk and a loaf of bread. But I'd hate to try and translate uh, a family shop of a full shopping trolley into bags and then wobble down the road on a bicycle. I mean, I'd wobble down the road on a bicycle anyway, but carrying a full family shop, I don't. I, I think this is, whilst I encourage that, I don't think necessarily large supermarkets are the place for that, although some provision should be made for those who do want just a, a pint of milk and uh, a loaf of bread or similar amounts. Um, and I think, I think uh, you know, as, as, as I said earlier, this, this is a difficult one. Um, it is what it is. Um, if members are minded to vote against it, then they need to really, really come up with some very good reasons um, why we should. I personally am going to support it. Um, because I don't think we could come up with the reasons that would satisfy an appeal on this, uh, especially an appeal from a, from a corporate barrister. Um, so I'm going to support this, but I think we just need to be a bit careful. We don't be waylaid by what could be or what might be. Is that proposal, Vince? Yes. Thank you. Edward was next. Just, just, just coming in again. I think Vince, uh, you must understand, I wasn't talking about the uh, biking down to get the pint of milk and wobbling around the road and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you make it very humorous to your point, but I'm, I'm, connect, I'm concerned with connectivity. I'm, I'm concerned with people cycling out of town and across town. It's not to the shop that they're going. They may drop off for that for <coughs> some bottle of water or something to keep them going. But no, it's, it's actually just connecting the different cycle possibilities that will be there in the future and making taking advantage of this, this plan to do that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Ted. Thank you, Chair. Um, noted all the points. I, I think everybody is, in, is uh, has the same concerns about the actual egress and ac access and egress on the site, particularly uh, the battlefield island, the implications there and further back. 
the one thing I just want to say, and, uh, I wouldn't say it's been smoked, but nonetheless, there was mention from our, to our highways officer that, that he had um, encouraged the, the, the uh, applicants to uh, consider a special road assessment, which, which was actually mentioned. That was at, at the, our officer's suggestion. The problem is that that, that that was independently assessed by the applicants and I begin sometimes to, to express a little uh, anxiety about specialist assessments which will weigh the balance, which are ultimately um, uh, commissioned by the, the applicants themselves. Uh, so it's something that, that certainly concerns me. The other point was that the, the, the um, applicant very eloquently and, and, and discreetly actually mentioned uh, a barrister's opinion. It was just gently floated out and I'll congratulate him on the subtlety with which he did it. And he was suggesting that there was officer, officers concurred with the barrister, barrister's opinion. Have we actually had any conversations with his barrister or? Please, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be. That's important, though, I think. <laughs> Peter, well, we have a proposed choice. You want to come in, sorry. Yes, please. Um, I just want to say I will unhappily be supporting this application. Um, every bit of my being says it's dangerous, um, it, it's the road situation. But given uh, what's been uh, written by our highways officer, as Vincent said, I think it would be very difficult to uh, refuse this. We, I think we lose on the PLC. So I am going to second Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just um, uh, to the highways officer, actually, whether you took into account the expected increase in traffic, which would result from the North West Relief Road to this build. Um, at this, and whether you took that into account when you made your assessment of whether this was going to be a severe um, impact or not? So at the moment, the um, North West Relief Road application is still being reviewed. A number of questions have been asked about the impact of the North West Relief Road on Battlefield Roundabout and on those, on those particular legs at the moment. It's suggesting that it's the, uh, the southern a49 leg which is um, causing more concern or respect and may, there may well be some additional queuing on battlefield road but those 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 assessments are still being carried out obviously in relation to this particular development to some extent uh, some of those traffic movements in connection with Aldi's are already on the network there'll be a, a, a redistribution of some of those traffic movements and at the end of the day, you know, we, we are we are talking about um, an acknowledged employment site that is going to be used for retail, but it you know it is in the local plan. So to some extent, as I've said previously, you know, the development of this site is an inevitability. It's about trying to get the right the right access to it. That's that, that's perhaps been you know the, the problem at the end of the day. And just, just picking up the point by Councillor Clark when the reference was made to the safety audit, as we call it. Those safety audits are carried out by an ind yes, it's commissioned by the applicant. Indeed, we can we, we can commission it, but it's it's an independent audit that's carried out. We obviously look at that audit as well. We don't just take it at, at face value. We have to because sometimes an audit will come in my direction and I'll read it and think, well, actually, I don't agree with that. So it's it's not like it's it's sort of paid for yes by the applicant, but it's not necessarily done there to sort of favour the applicants in any way, shape, or form. You know, they are done in there. You know, it is a process that's carried out. Thank you, Chair. Can I, I just make? Can I just respond to that? I, I, I fully take that on board. It's just the, the issue that always concerns me is if the applicant is actually paying the specialist. I mean, you know, that uh, I understand where Mark is coming from, and I'm sure he, he would, but he's having to, he's been suggesting that he would be assessing the independent assessors 
value in the assessment? Well, surely the fact that it's been uh, put to an independent assessor um, uh, rather mitigates against, against them. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, to cast aspersions about Mark, certainly not, but my concern is that, that we're in such a parlous state in local government, we are increasingly totally dependent on the applicant coming forward with all the specialist uh, requirements and actually paying for it. And we, we don't have the, the, the wherewithal to, to actually uh, put up a, uh, to, to, to actually check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. It occurred to me that um, employment land may have not developed because of the access problems. Maybe that put people off. Um, because people are aware that it's difficult turning out to that site. Why don't we just ask the applicant in this particular case, as part of a 106 agreement, to provide traffic calming measures, to provide traffic control to the traffic lights, so that you can exit the site safely. <laughs> We've all got concerns. We know that we know the traffic's going to queue up, so an extra minute with safe access from that site wouldn't really affect the traffic flow along the main road but it would enable the site to be used better and maybe in future used for employment land because it becomes a more acceptable site to use. Yeah. As Councillor Hunt said we've got to decide on what's in front of us today so this is where we're at we've got the opportunity from your opposer and seconder we've had loads of comments Wow. Alvin, we'd like to come back on anything. Sorry, you've been you've been highwaying all the time. <laughs> so we'll just get Calvin to come in. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, you continue to um you know, have all the highways <laughs> chat and um, pretend I'm not here. No, um uh, no, not not particularly um but just to yes yeah, to clarify that yeah, we have to look at the application as we have before us and um you know there were lots of as Councillor Hunt said, there were lots of you know views that we might have as to you know, change this, change that, but um, but, but yeah, we have to either make a decision to, um, or you have to make a decision to either approve it or, or, or if you don't like it, to, to refuse it, and, uh, and that's, the, that's the question before you. Thank you. Right, Jeff. Can I just say, if it does become a problem, then it's down to Shropshire Council to pay for the any traffic lights. In this case, it wouldn't be. But I do accept we we may must make a decision on what's before us and what not what we may like it to be. Yeah. So with that, I'll um, I'll, go. I'll I'll keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just in relation to Councillor Elner's last suggestion, um, in order for um, something to be required in a 106 agreement, it needs to be necessary to make the development acceptable. That's the legal requirement. And what you've heard from your highways officer is that actually it's acceptable as it is, and therefore you couldn't meet the test for adding in for the traffic calming or traffic lights um, in, with requirement in a, in a section 106 agreement. If the highways officer had advised that that was necessary and without which we couldn't approve it, then obviously we could require that in a section 106, but you haven't got the evidence to support that, I'm afraid. Thank you, Miranda. <laughs> Right. We have no more comments. Now we have a proposed and seconder for approval this application. Can we have a show of hands for it to be approved, please? Yeah, against? One, two, three. That's been carried, so uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's been approved. Thank you. Right, moving on to residential development, Western Dal Cottage, Brown Hill, presenting. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Application is for reserve matters referring to appearance, layout, landscaping, and scale in relation to outline approval. 
for a residential development of two detached dwellings, formation of vehicle access with visible displays, which included removal of trees. Access was approved, was approved at the outline stage. Uh, there are no updates in this application. Application is presented to committee in accordance with the committee resolution when the application is approved at the outline stage. Application site outlined in red, Kelvin. Uh, application site outlined in red, indicating access to the site from the direction of Dolly Cottage to the east of the site. The site is within the recognised development boundary for right 11 towns. The site having, of course, outlined planning consent. Next one. Proposed site plan indicating the siting of the proposed two dwellings, which is to the uh, west of Dorney Cottage. Next plan. So, so proposed plans elevations. The site from the front is elevated, overlooking the surrounding countryside, and the development is arranged over three floors, built as it is, proposed into a steep bank looking out towards the River Perry and its surroundings. Next plan. Is a tracking plan in relationship to access to the site. As I pointed out earlier, uh, access was approved as part of the outline approval, and therefore this does not form part of reserve matters. Next plan. Uh, these are proposed computerised images of how the plan will look. Contemporary in design, and I suspect not to everyone's taste, but considered by officers appropriate to the setting and location built as they are into the steep bank. Issues in relation to the surrounding historic environment are considered acceptable. As indicated earlier, the application is presented to committee as a result of the outline approval at committee and reserve matters to be presented to committee at their request. Right in 11 Towns Parish Council objected to the proposal at outline stage and have maintained their objection to the reserve matters, indicating an objection on highway and access grounds. The access into the site form part of the outline approval, and this is not part of the reserve matters of consideration. However, it is also noted that Shropshire Council's highways have not objected to the reserve matters application, recommending the conditions to be attached to any approval notice issued in relation to layout of the access drive. That is condition number six as set out in your the appendix attached to your report. Drainage issues are also considered acceptable and condition number seven on the outline approval will require attention by developers prior to any development on site. The two letters of objections received from members of the public are noted. However, it is considered issues raised are adequately considered as part of the application. Landscaping also considered acceptable and whistle it is regrettable that the development result in the loss of two trees and some other vegetation. It is also noted the council's tree officer raises no objections to the proposal and accepts the findings of the agricultural impact assessment submitted as part of the application. Conditions two, three and four attached to appendix one to the officer's report cover tree issues and mitigation on site. In conclusion, officers consider the contemporary design of the two dwellings acceptable in consideration of location and scale of the development as proposed, along with density in relation to the surrounding built environment. Public highway and transport issues are considered to be adequately addressed, along with drainage and ecology, as discussed in the report. The, rec the recommendation is one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1, attached to the report. That concludes my presentation, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. We have two speakers on this, and the first will be read out by Alex. Thank you, Chair. This is from Brighton 11 Towns Parish Council, and they state, Brighton 11 Towns Parish Council would like to reiterate its previous concerns and objections to this application, namely road safety, access and drainage. Since the Parish Council's previous comments, considerable data has been collected from the vehicle activated sign, speed sign on Brownhill, which supports our concerns about the dangerous nature of this stretch of highway. The number of vehicles routinely exceeding the 30 miles per hour speed limit, often by more than 10 miles per hour, and some vehicles by a highly dangerous margin, remains a considerable concern in the community. 
All VAS data has been shared with WSP previously as part of a community infrastructure levy road safety project in right and 11 towns, which would hopefully reduce the speed of traffic in time. But additional vehicles accessing Brownhill via the proposed development would certainly increase the risk of conflict and potential collisions. The Parish Council also seeks clarifications and assurances from the applicant on how the proposed turning area would be kept clear and not used as parking, as this will impact safe access and egress onto Brown Hill. There are also concerns about the steepness of the proposed access arrangements and whether this driveway will be practical in winter when roads are icy. The Parish Council is also still concerned about drainage on the site, particularly about rainwater running off the hill and road down into the proposed development after occupation, but also about the potential for waste materials to be washed into the River Perry during construction. It is noted that mitigation measures are mentioned in the ecology report, so it is imperative that these must be complied with if permission is to be granted. For the above reasons, the Parish Council maintains its previous objections to this proposed development and does not recommend that permission be granted. Thank you, Miranda. Right, we have some speaking for Andrew Belshaw. Would you like to move forward, please? Would you like a 30 second warning? Thank you, please. Okay. You have three minutes from when you start. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Committee. Uh, as the officer has already said, this development site sits within the right uh, development boundary. The development is for two dwellings. Um, it's a reserve master's application based on an outline approval from 2014. Um, the reserve matter considers the siting, scale, design and landscaping for the site. As already mentioned, access is already uh, approved essentially. We have carried out additional uh, data checks and we've also done the tracking diagrams which have shown that access and egress from the site can be done in a safe forward gear um, from all directions. Um, I appreciate that the proposal is a contemporary design. We, we like it, obviously. Um, the, the siting is invisible from the road. You can see a green roof from the road. Um, you are going to see it from a big footpath 240 metres away on the other side of the river. Um, but um, we really think that these are quite exciting properties that will generate some interest and hopefully improve design across the county if, if approved. We uh, recommend this application to the committee for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we have, uh, right, any comments from you, Philip, you'd like to? Uh, thank you, Mr. Well, I, I, I note the comments made by the Parish Council. However, as I stated in my presentation, access was partly outline approval. Uh, highways do not, uh, South Council Highways rather, do not object to the reserve matters and condition number six covers the access drive. Uh, drainage I'm also covered in the report and in the presentation. I also note what the uh, agent has just said with regards uh, access issues, uh, which I share. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'm going to open the floor. Vince has already indicated. And Gerald. Thanks. Uh, I, I think a couple of people have already mentioned the fact that actually the access is not for us to look at. That's already been determined. I think the other thing um, that was um, mentioned was um, drainage um, and 6.6.1. Um, no details being provided at this stage, how the development will be drained. These details will need to be submitted in order to discharge condition seven that's attached to the outline planning consent. So that would need to be dealt with um, before um, it could be developed. Um, I'm surprised actually that the Parish Council didn't really mention the design. Um, it is contemporary. I'm, I'm not sure in all parts of Shropshire it would improve, improve what's there. I think, um, I think that's a, a brave statement to make that many other architects might disagree with. Um, they wouldn't be for me, but they would be for somebody. Uh, caveat emptor at the end of the day, buy beware. So, you know, it's up, it's up to the buyers. I, I can't see, I mean, this is, this is an outline 
it's already got outlined. This this is for reserve matters, and I can't see anything wrong with these, other than the fact that I wouldn't buy one. But yeah. I'm not going to. So, mm -hmm. so is that proposed? Well, I feel a bit greedy proposing again. If somebody else well, wants to have a go, they can. If not, I will. Right. Thank you, <laughs> Gerald. If you switch it on, please, Gerald. You, you, you're not. Your mic's not. Yeah, I find this a very exciting development. It's not you see, not, nothing you see normally in Shropshire. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, offend anybody. It can't be seen from the road, and the people who buy this is they're buying it because they're also excited about the design. I would imagine. So I like the design, and I'm I'm in favour of it. Uh, with regards to the, uh, the the road to it, it looks in a fairly straight in this map here. A fairly straight road to it alongside there, and is this sufficient um, turning space there? Sufficient for four cars, clients, and they can, they can leave and uh, get out in a forward direction. I'm quite happy with this, and I would propose it, Chairman. Second, second, yep. <laughs> now, leave it at that. That's not going to get complicated. Any more comments? My mind is quite straightforward, but. Oh, sorry, just one point, Ted. If you leave the room, you can't partake. And for any future, if everybody leaves the room without asking, you have to stop the meeting for a comfort break, okay? So if you leave the room, you can't partake in that application, okay? For oh, future I, I, reference. I was aware of that, Jeremy. Doesn't relate thought, to my thought specific thought. area. That's, that's the reason why I was anxious to get back. Just right. in time to hear the outcome, but I wasn't intended mm -hmm. to take part. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Okay, no more speakers. Your proposal second that all those in favour of this application, please show. Can't see Alex. No. Okay. Uh, any any uh, against? Any abstentions? Okay, they can't. <laughs> we always have one awkward one, so <laughs> <laughs> joke, joke. Okay, so would any of you like a comfort break before you go to the next application? No. No? Okay. No, we're fine. Right, next application, Belden Land over Churncart, which, yes, thank you. Right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this application is brought back to committee for member consideration, having been approved by members at committee on June 8, 2021, subject to the conditions and the section 106 agreement as outlined in the update report, uh, which is before you. Uh, the reason for bringing this back to committee is to clarify on the affordable housing provision. It is, it is noted, mem uh, a member of the public has been, has been copied in, in, into an email. In, sorry, I rephrase that. It is noted member has been copied into an email from a Mr. Steve Malloy, who indicates that he does not consider the application policy compliant because the agreement for reduction in affordable housing to 15% had expired in 2018. The update report is clear on this matter, and I need not repeat the situation here. Also, members are reminded that the current extant plan permission for site also refers to 15% affordable housing provision. For your observation purposes, the, the document referred to as the mem memorandum of understanding in the email from Mr. Malai is the document he received from our planning policy team in response to his freedom of information request. The applicants have carried out a financial viability assessment as set out in their update report, in the update report, and these instructions to the viability assessors were from the council and not the applicants in relation to the 15% total housing provision, which is in line with all other SUE sites and not just this one at Turncott. As indicated in Mr. Malloy's email, and in the update report, the key issue to be considered is whether the affordable housing provision on site would impact the decision that members had made in granting planning permission, subject to conditions and the completion of Section 106 
as per the June 8th committee resolution. Uh, before I go on into detail, uh, the, we've also had a complaint uh, in the email with regards to the um, viability, viability of the uh, viability assessment itself. And uh, officers consider it is commonplace in the development industry, as in other sectors, for consultancies to work for both private and public bodies without there being any conflict of interest. Uh, when we take uh, on any consultancy work, or consultancy takes on any consultancy work, they undertake an internal conflict of interest check prior to starting work, which I understand the, uh, the council's chosen uh, assessors did so in this instance. Uh, with regard to the, the petition, we retain viability consultants of Shropshire, uh, the, they gain the status to transmit parent assessment process. Uh, it was the council, as I pointed out, that uh, approached the people, uh, the, the RCA, in order to carry out the viability assessment. The detailed relationship to their viability assessment is referred to in the update report, and in conclusion, the assessment concludes that in this instance, 15% affordable housing provision is acceptable, subject to further payment of £82,017 towards affordable housing provision. And as such, the recommendation to this application remains one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report, uh, which is uh, attached to the, up to the update report in front of you. And any modifications to these conditions as considered necessary by the case officer in conjunction with the assistant director and the signing of a section 106 agreement in relation to affordable housing as set out in the addendum report, along with the financial contribution of £82,017 as a contribution towards the provision of off-site affordable housing. And detail in relation to the section 106 report as set out in the previous board to committee dated the 8th of June 2021. For members' benefit and to refresh, as we're considering this application further, I'll run briefly run through the slides. Uh, the application was made in full and proposes mixed residential development of 340 dwellings, which includes provision for 51 affordable dwellings, creation of access points, installation of infrastructure, path links public open space and biodiversity enhancement on land at Cherry Cot off Wellsville Road, Bicton, East Shrewsbury. Members will be aware of the site having visited prior to the previous committee consideration back in June. Uh, me members went to the update sheet and on additional representations made at the time and I now would like to run through the plans. There's a site outlined in red uh, which members will be aware of uh, having walked extensively the site prior to the meeting on the morning of our committee back in June. Next slide. Uh, that shows the, uh, the total of the, area, uh, uh, of the development site plus uh, the area to the west of Calcutt Lane where there's a uh, drainage attenuation and uh, a new mitigation area, sorry, on the area west of Calcutt Lane. Next slide. That, that's showing the indicative plan of the of the site layouts. Of the, of the, uh, that is the revised layout plan. Sorry, we see. Uh, please note the pond, which has been retained as part of this application. The previous approval did not include uh, retention of one of the ponds in the site. Next slide. That shows uh, a, a, another view of the, the landscape layout. Uh, the route of the proposed. Um, Link Road uh, severs the site from uh, uh, drainage and, and recreation space on the other side of the proposed road. Access over to the um, this would be via a proposed footbridge the, uh, to the east of Shepherd's Lane. That is part of the application for 
the link road and is not part of the consideration to this application. Next slide. Uh, now, they now run to a uh, section of the housing proposal site. The main essence of this application is was to create 40 more, 40 more dwellings than previously approved. However, the emphasis is much more on three bedroom dwellings rather than the larger scaled houses. Kelvin is now showing a, a sample of the proposed dwellings to be built on site. Uh, which is a mixture of two, three, maybe two, two and three and some four bedroom dwellings. <laughs> uh, now it shows a, a plan of what it would look like. Next slide. Right, that's the site, site photographs now showing the site. Members will recall when you're on site. Just about the briefing so you can see. And again, the only the ponds in the bottom corner, the one to be retained, and it's showing the sites with the, the vegetation. It was formerly in arable production. Next, some more photographs. Uh, tree, existing trees on site of any value, veteran oaks are to be retained. And that's showing the site looking north towards Victor Heath Farm <coughs> Russell Road. Uh, that is Welsh Road on which access will be obtained into the site. Right, uh, one of the issues when we were on site last time uh, I made an emphasis on was the requirement in order to get successful development here that landscaping is of, of a significant concern and interest. And <laughs> on the opposite side of the road is a development called Gaines Park, which in, in my opinion has matured quite nicely. Uh, and one of the main reasons is the landscaping, uh, which was that showing hedges on the entrance to, to, to it. Uh, other material considerations since the application was brought to committee, uh, well, I just touched on one now, the NPPF, uh, that was updated in July 21st, and that actually puts more emphasis on what I'm just talking about now with landscaping. So I must have been a bit ahead of my time. Uh, on the 15th of July 2021, the council resolved to submit the emerging local plan uh, to the planning inspect inspectorate for examination. This therefore has some limited planning weight and in the planning process it is considered by officers of development as proposed is broadly acceptable in relation to the emerging local plan. Uh, that concludes my uh, presentation on this application to chair. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, we have no speakers in this application, so I'll open it up. Thank you, Alex. This is in my ward. Sorry? This is in my ward. Oh, so it's in your ward. So you want to speak on it? I did. So, um, so I know mean that this is just uh, to do with the fact that there's effectively an um, underspot against 20% at least of affordable homes, but I just wanted to raise the point that the range when this was passed. In June, which was, I think, a lot of parts of this application were insufficiently detailed, and we are now seeing groups of that um, both on the site where there are some real concerns over planning conditions being met, and also in um, in the case of this where you know some freedom of information requests to actually reveal what was going on. So on this uh, particular uh, matter, uh, which is just to the affordable homes and extra. Um, funding given to lots of them. I just wanted to say that in my own particular issue what's been discussed, but I think we sort of set ourselves up to fail with voting through this activity. And I suspect this won't be the last time this application is brought to this committee as a result of that. Because there's quite a lot going on there, frankly, and I know a lot of my residents have very good reason to be on the line. Thank you. We don't just respond. I'm not quite sure what he means by it coming back to committee. I was a bit confused by that. Okay. Perhaps you could explain what he means. I just mean, in, uh, I, mean I think I've had conversations with officers in this way, which aren't so public yet, but there are some real worries about planning conditions being met on a few counts, and I think we'll have to this discussion after this. <laughs> Yes, I can. Answer. It, there is an extant planning permission for the site where there's one condition left for them to discharge. Now, I am aware a separate planning application which has been made for a sales home 
on site and that is retrospective. That has not been determined yet. There are issues with that, I fully appreciate. However, that is a separate matter, uh, subject to a separate planning application and therefore we cannot bring that into this application, considering this application. Um, I, uh, 15% was the uh, affordable housing provision, as I was led to believe. Uh, I believe the freedom of information request was processed by our planning policy team. And I understand the memorandum of understanding that I was informed from the basis of this was passed forward to the person requesting. So um, I'm at a loss actually to uh, what other further issues of concern there are, I would have welcomed you bring them to me as a case officer to my attention prior to this application coming to Kuti today. If you do have concerns as a local ward member in relation to the site, I've certainly spoken to the other ward member because it's a, it's a split site and she tells her words were to me. Uh, she's very aware of this extant planning permission for the site and which also includes provision for 15% of housing and we shall whistle. She supports the, the views of her parish council, which is Bicton. She was also aware that this planning application uh, is an improvement from a biodiversity and landscape point of view. And that's all contact about with regards to local members on this application. Thank you. Thank you. Right on to the floor. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we'd all love to see as many affordable houses as possible being built in Shropshire. Um, and with this development, there is the existing permission given for 296 homes, which would only provide 45 affordable homes. This does get us six more than that. And we retain the pond. Um, and now we get £82,000 towards more affordable homes. So, you know, I, I don't think we have a choice other than to stand by our previous decision and um, approve this because it's it's better than the 296 uh, with only 45 affordable homes that we'll get without. Thank you. Uh, so I propose that we uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Just Well, laughs> give consent. I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. It's no, thank you. It's no more comments. I'll take the vote. All those in favour, please show. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Right, that's the timing. Where is my. The rest of my agenda, I can't see it somewhere. Where are we? Lost. I've got it, good, good. Appeals. Any comments on the appeals? No, Mr. Chair, there's only two large apparently there's no decision to turn. No, I was just looking at that much for an option. Right. Data next meeting to note the next meeting the Lord Planning Committee will be held at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, 20th of September, 2021, in the Shuji Room Chai Hall. Excuse me. Maybe. So uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Yes, thank you. Close the meeting.